But by the way, the Caleb Williams versus Michael Penix game, USC versus Washington, Michael Penix looked better than Caleb Williams. If anybody's gonna drop, I feel like it'd be him who randomly drops, and it'll, but then it'll be a mistake. And Michael Penix Jr. lit it up at Washington. He's lit it up in the past at Indiana. I know he had some injury concerns, Sammy, but are people sleeping on Michael Penix? There are a lot of reports. I think I saw something on Twitter yesterday. A lot of people are hearing that he might end up having. Welcome to the Sports on Tap Brothers podcast. And I'm George. And with me, always, my little brother, Sammy. Now, let's tap in and get this podcast rolling. Um. Well, they were, but now they're not. I mean, there, there are a lot of reports. I think I saw something on Twitter yesterday. A lot of people are hearing that he might end up in Vegas. Like, so he'll be Which going I top think would be a great 10 to 15. Fit. Yeah, top 10 to 15, so they're not sleeping on him at all anymore. Um, but it, he is one of those interesting situations where you wouldn't like, and he'll have a very good career, and people will be like, I can't believe he dropped. But it seems like he would be the one. Like I know that like I feel like McCarthy's going to go early, McDaniels, Drake May, Caleb Williams, obviously. And then there's like the Bo Nix, Michael Penix, and a couple yeah. others. It's like, you know, if I, if he's on the right team, I think he'll get taken, like the Raiders potentially there. But if not, he might drop, and I think it'll be a one of those like you'll look back and say like, damn, he kind of dropped way further than we thought. It's so funny because like you're kind of like in a weird way, it's right back to where the Pac-12 was during the season. Now the def- debunked Pac-12, but everyone was sleeping on uh, Michael Penix Jr. and Bo Nix and Oregon and Washington, and then here comes the draft. Oh, which quarterbacks are people kind of bringing down? Oh, Michael Penix Jr., Bo Nix, Oregon, Washington again. And I don't know what it is, but I mean, we watched a lot of college football this year, and it just feels like Michael Penix and Bo Nix, by the way, looked better than J.J. McCarthy. They look- Yeah. I just feel like sometimes people overthink the room, and I know the injury concern is big, right? They say his knees and all that, but it's been two straight seasons. He hasn't missed a game, and maybe he goes in the NFL, and it's physical, and he gets hurt, but I feel like that's a lot of luck involved, and I just feel like in, in a way, people are overthinking this. I think Michael Penix Jr., sure, maybe you should go after Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels, but I, I'm not a scout but God, this watching the eye test to me has him a lot higher than like a McCarthy just from watching. I will say, I mean, he made it pretty clear that he came back to prove that he can stay healthy. That was two years straight, right? Now, right. obviously, like any other player in NFL or college football or football in general, he got banged up a couple times. Like, you know, I know in the championship game, he was walking out with like some he got hit way too many times and that's not yes. even his fault. It's like, you know, the Michigan just really outmanned, uh, Washington. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, he came back to prove that he can be healthy again. And he did it for two straight years at Washington and took him from a really freaking good team to making it to the national championship. So I feel like compared to most quarterbacks that are in this draft, I, at least in terms of proving it, I feel like he might be at the top of the list of the prove it. Now, you might say J.J. McCarthy. For some people, might say that. But J.J. McCarthy, we can look back. Those last five games of the season, he, I don't think he threw more than 15 or 16 times in a game. Against Washington, he was like 10 for, like 10 for 14 with like 100 yards. They ran it down Washington's throw in the championship game. And that's not a bad thing. That's not an uh, indictment on J.J. McCarthy. But I'm saying what quarterback in this draft that like, went out there and proved it the most team-wise, play-wise, I think it's Michael Penix Jr. I think he proved it more 100%. than Jaden Daniels, Drake May. He definitely proved it more than Caleb Williams. I can't, they were supposed to be a top three, four team in the nation. The best he recruiting beat Bo class Nix. ever. Yeah. He was the man against Bo Nix twice and beat Bo Nix twice. Bo Nix was probably the next closest to being the one that proved it, though, if you think about it. He had a great career at Auburn. He came to Oregon. If it wasn't for Michael Penix being at Washington, Oregon was probably in that playoff this year because they probably would have won the Pac-12. So, Mm -hmm. which shows, that was the two guys I feel like were proving it the most, and Michael Penix kept coming out on top. And, like, at the end of the day, he proved it more than Caleb Williams. I know Caleb Williams is a better talent and whatever, but 
Who proved it more last year? Definitely Michael Penix Jr. Yeah. And, well, Sammy, I kind of want to give you a couple of teams here that I think that are realistic. He's not going to the Bears. He's not going to the Commanders. Like, those teams or the Patriots. It doesn't seem like they're on the top three draft board, right, for Michael Penix Jr. So, but I want to know who do you think our team, like, out of these teams, who would be the best fit? So you got the um, Vikings, which is a possibility. Falcons, Broncos, Raiders, Seahawks. And a dark horse, and I think it's a very big dark horse over here, the Miami Dolphins. Well, I'll tell you, it's not going to be the Dolphins, just from my like personal opinion. That's my opinion, too, but it's a dark horse. I've heard some. I've heard a lot that the Dolphins haven't re-signed Tua yet, and they like their whole offense is based on left-handed quarterbacks. Michael Penn is a left-handed quarterback, so there's been some speculation That's there. I don't think it's probably why the speculation is there, just because of the left-hand thing. <laughs> yeah, it probably is. No, no, totally. Yeah. But which one no, of those teams not... do you like the most? I totally uh, agree with you, by the way. No, it's just funny. Is I know how, like, I know how you know media works. It's like people are probably like, wait, wait a second, left-handed. They didn't resign to a. The offense is already built left-handed. Watch now that I'm making fun of it, he's going to end up with the Miami on the Dolphins. Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins um, are trading up to draft day, Michael Penix Jr. There's one place that's best for all of these quarterbacks, in my opinion, mm-hmm. which is Minnesota, mm-hmm. and I, that. But that's not a Michael Penix thing for me. That's like a if I'm a quarterback in this draft, if I'm JJ McCarthy, if I'm you know Drake May, if I'm Caleb Williams, even which is not going to happen. But Minnesota Vikings, like the. Yes, they're in Minnesota, but they play in a lot of domes. I, you know, I know they play in Chicago and Green Bay, but they play those eight or nine games at yeah. home in their dome. They play two ga- or a game a year in Detroit, and then you know a lot of other places. The weather's fine. It's a really cool environment. It's a despite not winning franchise, it's always like competitive, right? And quarterbacks like you've seen Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins up to 35, 36 years old with that coach and that system. They and do Justin really Jefferson. well. Yeah, and Justin if he stays, but yeah, like Justin Jefferson, yeah. they have. I feel like Minnesota is amazing for a quarterback right now, like today. So if I had to, in, in Michael Penix, I could see him in that purple, purple and yellow instead of purple and gold. I guess uh, just like the Huskies, but I would say that for a couple quarterbacks, obviously. But I, I'll go with the Vikings. I think the Raiders are probably where he's going to end up, but I, I think Vikings is where he would be. Like, okay, this this is going to work really well. Yeah, I hope it's the Seahawks. <laughs> that's who I hope it is. But I would say his best fit is what you said, Minnesota. I think that's every quarterback's best fit with the system, the weapons, the receivers, the dome. But if I wanted a place, it would be Seattle. Yeah, I mean, that would be cool because they got Ryan Grubb, his offensive coordinator, Scott Huff, the, the offensive line coach from UW. Mm-hmm. They all kind of, a couple of them left Alabama with the board and then decided to backtrack and go to the Seahawks instead. Mm-hmm. And it would make sense because they know they like him. The only thing, and, you know, I think the Seahawks GM, John Schneider, for those that aren't Seahawks fans, you could probably tell George and I are Seahawks fans because there's some extreme Seahawks information on these sometimes. Mm -hmm. But he said that, you know, it doesn't derail them from drafting a quarterback potentially, even though they traded for Sam Howell. I just wonder why they would have done that, why keep Geno and trade for Sam Howell and draft a quarterback. But at the end of the day, if they did go grab Michael Penix, it would be kind of fun because, you know, he stays in Seattle. You have a future. Mm -hmm. Only problem is somebody like Michael Penix, he's 25, I think. Like, you don't really want him sitting behind anybody (laughs) for much time. Maybe maybe just one year. Yeah, we'll see. If he goes to, like, Minnesota, though, he's starting. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, perfect, bro. Well, I told you we're ending these podcasts with something new. And I got something with you right now. We got one minute, me and you. And this is tougher than, I was thinking about it. It's tougher than it looks. Name as many quarterbacks with the name Michael or Mike. Sammy, you go first. Are we each doing this? Yeah, we're just back and forth. We're going to try to name as many with Michael or Mike. One minute, starting now. Mike Vick. All right, Mike Glennon. Michael Penix Jr. Mike White. What's not fair about this is you knew this question was coming up. I didn't. So okay, <laughs> that's true. I, I literally, I I don't even know how many I can do. Mike, Mike Glennon. I said Mike Glennon. Um, I didn't look any up, so it's just as hard for me. It's not just as hard. If I th- if I thought about this for the last hour, I would have thought of more. Uh, Mike. Is there a lot of Mike quarterbacks? I don't know. 
<laughs> I thought about Michael Robinson from Penn State, but he played running back in the NFL. Why is it? It's way harder than you would think. I, I literally can't think of many mics. I, I'm I just, done. I literally can't think of any. Me either. Those are it. Mike White, Mike Glennon, Michael Vick, Michael Penix Jr. That's all I got. Uh, That's a minute, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, man, there's no quarterbacks with the name Mike. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's been a lot more than that, but uh, that's that's hard. I know. Mike White. I'm trying to think who was like, I don't know. Uh, Michael Pratt, he's coming into the NFL. It's, okay. Should, I should have known that one. <laughs> that's yeah, tough. there's not many Mikes. I went. I think like you can go on Stat Muse and type in like players named Mike in the NFL. Yeah, but it doesn't tell you just quarterbacks. That's the problem. Oh really? Yeah. He's so. named Michael. Let's see. Michael Let Bishop. Michael Bishop. Okay. There's only two that were named Mike. Michael. That's it. No, that's Michael. I'm gonna try Mike. I don't know. Are these all quarterbacks? Holy crap! Um, I don't. I don't know if. The, yeah, these are quarterbacks. Mike Telefliero, Mike Phipps, Mike Ernst, Mike Knott, Mike Kirkland, Mike Morosky. I don't even know any of these guys. Either. All right. Well, so Michael Penix Jr. has a chance to become the second best Michael after Michael Vick in NFL history. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. Surprising. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. This is the Sports on Tap. If you want to watch our basketball channel, you can find it in the link below. Listen to our, all our podcasts below. Everything that we do is right down below. So, um, also, Sammy did mention we're Seattle sports fans. We have a Seattle podcast also in the link below. You guys get the gist. I'm George on Tap. With me is my brother, Sammy on Tap. We'll be back on Monday. Thank you for watching. And, Sammy, you know what we like to say? Thanks for stopping by.